Hey everybody and welcome back to the Moonlighter series. My name is Killer Fat Joe and today I'm going to be covering every single boss throughout the Moonlighter game, their attacks, and helpful ways to beat them. So for this video I'll have timestamps for each boss that will make it easier for you to navigate if you'd like to skip to the one you are on. Also, if you feel like you have anything to add or something I missed during the fights, please comment down below. The first boss we encounter is the Golem King, a mess of mechanical and slime ready to challenge any hopeful heroes or merchants alike. Honestly, this boss takes no time to beat and its attacks are easily avoided. Its three main attacks are a sweeping arm of slime, falling rocks, and a hand that tracks you trying to fall on your head. So long as you make sure not to get caught in the debris field that the boss spawns, you can pretty much beat this guy on your first try. His attacks are very choreographed and honestly you should just have a really easy time with him. The carnivorous mutated plant is a little bit more difficult, but just like the Golem King, all of its attacks are easily readable. The main problem that comes with this boss is it isn't stationary like the first boss we fight. The forest guardian itself will damage you and also has multiple projectile attacks. It also spawns smaller plants that shoot balls which frankly can make it harder to dodge the boss's attack. It will also use roots that come out of the ground to attack you. These roots follow you around, but just avoid them like a bully in high school till they go away. Also it has a melee attack, but you should be able to get out of the way since this is pretty easy to read. The Guardian can be beaten using the Dark Souls way of life, which is avoid, then attack. Or if you have some patience, then you could use a bow to take almost no damage. Just make sure to keep the boss on screen as you can see what attacks will be next. Najah the Desert Guardian has a lot more unique attacks, and moves around the boss room a lot faster than the Forest Guardian. The main attacks that you will see are fire projectiles shooting in waves, lava blotches on the floor, and finally Naja launching the lead section at you quickly. Each segment that you destroy also makes the head section move faster. As said in one of my tip videos, the best way to defeat it is to try and get it as straight as possible. Then, with a charged bow attack, you can fire at it to deal damage to each section that the arrow passes through. Doing this repeatedly is a hassle, but it also prevents you from losing a lot of health. The worst boss in the entire game is without a doubt the Energy Flux. The Tech Guardian is relentless and it also has an attack which is, dare I say, complete bullshit. Thankfully this boss, while not entirely stationary, has to move between each of the pylons around the room. This makes it easy for you to track it off screen and shoot arrows at it. If you're trying to fight this boss with melee weapons, I've gotta say you have massive balls. Its attacks are quick and it makes a dodge attack seem way more tedious than fighting with bows. Its main electrical attacks are two orbs rotating around the energy flux. Another attack moves it between the pylons, though you are able to tell which pylon it's going to move to by the red line which targets the next pylon. Its aforementioned bullshit attack is a quick zone attack that almost covers the entire boss room. This attack damages you on the first wave and electrifies the floor beneath you, dealing massive amounts of damage. The best way to beat this is by remaining cautious of this ability. As even though it shows when it's about to attack you, you will not be able to get away from it without taking damage. Seriously, use the bow. Save yourself the trouble of getting up close to this thing. Our final boss and the one that I haven't showed in any of my other videos is the Last Dimensional Space Pirate. Unlike the other bosses, this guy has two phase levels. The first phase is super easy, almost akin to that of the Golem King, but just a tad bit harder. This phase is pretty much designed to whittle down your overshields and extra health bar for the next phase. The pirate boss attacks at you with an extra dimensional sword, dealing a lot to your overall health points, but is easily avoidable by using the dodge slash attack method. As every other boss, the bow is extremely useful against him as you can get him more than one attack. He also has a dash swing ability, but it can be read pretty easily. Next up, you've got his only other attack, which he disassembles his upper half from his lower half. The upper half comes from a horizontal quick attack, but the difficulty of this part is his lower half, which shoots rockets at you. Just try to avoid the rockets and then dodge away from the horizontal dash attack. You can still do damage to him by shooting the lower half, which remains stationary. The second phase of the boss fight gives him control over, over like a Golem King statue, while this phase is a complete 180 and becomes stupid difficult as well. The main reason why it is such a problem is because it draws from every other boss fight in the game. There is an attack from each section of the game, but it has two main unique attacks. The first spawns a dimensional rift summoning jellies from each of the dungeon, 
While it may not sound daunting, it's annoying as hell while the boss attacks you. Most of the time it'll have three attacks going at once. Its arms will be flailing at you from the side, the jellies will be following you around, and on top of that the roots make a return from the forest guardian. These roots attack three times, so what you want to do is let them run out, and then clear the jellies. After you do this, the boss will pull you towards itself and trap you inside of a circle. It then sends energy waves at you three times. Honing your skills over the entire game, you need to dodge, then attack the boss during this time. It will be a good way to get some great damage on the boss. Also, another thing to mention is that you cannot shoot arrows through the dimensional rifts, so be aware when you're doing a charge attack, because you're pretty much just going to get hit by the roots. Congratulations, you made it through the entire game beating every single boss. Now the last thing I'd like to mention is that there is an achievement called Janitor in the game. If you are looking to nab this, then all you have to do is kill every single boss with the broom. Sounds easy, right? Actually, it isn't that bad. All you have to do is just last hit the boss instead of only using the broom. Now the broom only does a ridiculously small amount of damage, but you can empower the broom the same way you can empower any other weapon in the game. Another achievement that's available to be earned is perfect. Pretty much all you have to do is not take any damage during the boss fights. So kudos to you if you can do that. I can't. I'm not that good. Well, that's all I have for this video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully this video helped you with any trouble you're having with the bosses. As for me, I am finally done with Moonlighter. It was a great game, and I'm probably going to be doing a review on it soon. So if you're wanting to watch that, please subscribe and you'll be notified when it comes out eventually. But enough of me rambling. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next video.